Here's his argument. Okay. Well, hold on. The word monogene or monogenes used of Isaac. You can't say only begotten because Isaac wasn't the only begotten son. Ishmael was there and Ishmael was older. So it has to mean one and only, the only one of his kind, unique. And that's what they try to tell you monogenes means. They say monogenes means unique, the only one of his, her, its kind. It doesn't mean only begotten. You understand what they're trying to sell you on? And what's the example? Aha, we got you here. Isaac. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Who he embraced the promise was about to sacrifice his one and only son. All right. Unique son. Let's see how the King James renders it. His only begotten son. So I hope you're not going to say that. It has to mean unique. The only one of his kind. Well. Now we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. Now, before we do that, let me show you what the Greek word is. Same word used of our Lord Jesus by John in five places. The word monogenes, used of our Lord Jesus, five times by John. And you'll see it. John 1.14, John 1.18, John 3.16, John 3.18, first John 4.9. So let's see the Greek. Here it is. Monogenes. Monogeny, where is it used? Here it's used of Jesus. John 3, 16, for God, so he gave his monogeny and used of Isaac here, right? Now, did everyone see a pattern here? Notice that the word monogenes only refers to a child. It never refers to a parent or a sibling. Right there, it should give it away. You will not find the word monogenes unless it's used in the poetic section of the psalm to refer to the psalmist monogenes, which is an exceptional use in a poetic book. But you will not find the word monogenes used of a father, a mother, or a sibling. It's always used of a child. Okay. Do you know why? Because what they don't emphasize is the word one and only is the first part. Monogenes. Okay, watch. Monogenes. The word mono from monos or monos, that's the word one and only. But the second part, genes, comes from Ginomai, right? And at times, words with one new are used synonymously with two news. All right, watch here. Genis, ginomai. Let's see now how that's used. Genos. Genis, genos, ginomai. Family, offspring, race, nation, kid. Notice it still refers to familial. Filial relationships, kindred. Well, what makes you a kindred? You're born of that stock, of that seed, of that race, or that species. It still has birth connotations. It refers to kindred, that you are of that kindred, that species, that race, that kind. How? By birth, by generation. But now let's see how it's used of our Lord. Descent. How are you priestly descent? Born of priestly lineage. Right? Sing it here. Family. Kindred. Joseph's family. How do you become a member of Joseph? By being born into his family. What about the birthing element in relation to Isaac? Well, you can't say Isaac is the only begotten because Ishmael was there. Well, if that's the case, then God made a mistake. What do you mean? Look what God says about Isaac. Genesis 22, 1 and 2. Sometime later, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son. But what? hold on, God. Yachid. Isaac was never the only son of Abraham. 
Don't you remember Ishmael? Hmm. I guess God didn't get the memo because God says Isaac is the only son. Yachid, which can mean uniqueness, but also means the one and only, the only child, the only individual. You get it, right? How about Genesis 22, 12? You've not withheld from me your son, your only son. Oh, so though Ishmael was there, Isaac can still be called only son? If so, why can't he be called the only begotten? Why? Let's see what it means in Hebrew. And I'll explain to you why he's the only begotten, only son. And this is an argument used by Muslims. Muslims say, see, your Bible is corrupt. Your Bible is corrupt. Why? Because God says Isaac is Abraham's only son. You know that's a corruption because he's never the only son. Damn. Don't you know your Hebrew? So hold on. If Isaac can be cannot be called the only begotten son because he's not the only son, then he cannot be called Yachid either. But you see, that's stupid. He is the only begotten son. In what sense? Though Ishmael was conceived of Hagar due to Sarah's impatience and Abraham's lack of faith and trust, he is not the child of promise. The reason why he's called the only son, only begotten, because he's the only child God promised to Abraham to be the heir of the covenant. So he is the only begotten son from that perspective. He is the only son from that perspective. Because Ishmael was not promised to Abraham to be the heir of the covenant promises. So yes, Isaac is the only begotten son, the only son in the sense in which the terms are meant to be used. So this is why you can't blindly follow scholarship. But it's going to get much worse. Let me show you something. Now watch. Look at these Catholic editions. Guys, here, the word monogenes. New American Bible. Only son. New Catholic Bible. Only son. Dewey Rames from the Latin. The only begotten. Okay, watch here. New American Bible. The only son, God. The only son, God. The only begotten son, Dewey Rames. New Catholic, only son. New American Bible. These are all Catholic Bibles, only son. Dewey Rames, only begotten son. You see what's doing to you Catholics? John 3, 16. God gave his only son. New American Bible, revised edition. New Catholic Bible, God gave his only son. Dewey Rames, his only begotten son. What about Revised Standard Version, Catholic edition? We're going to get there. They say there's a second edition of it. I don't know. John 3.18, New American Bible. The name of the only son, New Catholic Bible. Oh, this one they got right, the only begotten son of God. But then why didn't they do it here? Are they confusing you? His only son. You're going to get the impression it's a different Greek word. John 3.16, John 3.18. Dewey Rames, only begotten son. What about 1 John 4.9? Here, Catholic Bible says only begotten son. Hooray! New American Bible, his only son. Dewey Rames, only begotten son. Now let's look at the Revised Standard Version, Catholic edition, shall we? Let me go here. Let's see. Here it is, Catholic edition, right? Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. Only Son. Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. Only Son. No begotten. John 3.16. Revised Standard Version Catholic. Only Son. 3.18. Standard Version. Only Son. 1 John 4.9. Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. Only Son. Good. Where can we find that updated edition, man? Why is it on here? All right, now let's look at the Dewey Rames. Dewey Rames index right here. What is the Latin term? Here you go, for only begotten. I'm just going to give you one example, John 3.16. John 3.16. 
And then I got to wrap it up because I got to get ready. John 3, 16. Let's go here. And Lord willing, we'll have a lot more in part two, God willing. But I got to get ready for my boy, my Benoit. My Benoit. My Benoit. Okay, John 3, 16. Here it is. Let me enlarge it. Right here. Ut filium sum unigenitum. Unigenitum. Uniquely born generated. Only begotten son. How about 18? Name of the only begotten son of God. Okay. In nomini unigeniti. Unigeniti fili di. There it is. Unigeniti. So Jerome didn't know what he's talking about either? 